operated by an arm of the Justice Department, let people speak their minds. We are not defined by what happened a few weeks ago. We are defined by this community. We don't have to hold hands and sing, we are the world. But we have to be able to listen to each other and come to a place where we can be respectful of each other. Now tomorrow marks the first day of school for students in Fairfax and Prince William counties. More than 500 students in Dumfries will walk through the doors of the brand new Covington Harper Elementary School. The school has a focus on technology, providing laptops for the students to use. It is. We've been able to purchase uh, laptops for all of our third, fourth, and fifth graders, and it is our goal to implement that technology. Uh, the students walk in, minute they walk in, they have access to that computer to the time that they leave in the afternoon, and our goal is to not just make that a practice opportunity, but actually implement it in their learning. Covington Harper Elementary will also offer a robotics club for students and feature new amplification equipment that allows students who have hearing problems to be able to hear the teacher regardless of where they sit in the classroom. Thousands of people in Manassas, Virginia, the school students there heading back to the classroom tomorrow. But today, a local hair salon opened its doors to help them get ready. MJ Salon of Manassas held its annual cut-a-thon, and proceeds benefit the Boys and Girls Club. The event included a bake sale, a silent auction, and discounted haircuts. So what should we be expecting tomorrow when you get back to school and back to work? Howard has your full forecast, and that's next.
always watching, always tracking. WUSA 9's first alert weather, D.C.'s most accurate. So Howard Bernstein joining me now, and we were looking at the just the devastation, the flooding. It's yeah. crazy. I talked to Ariel earlier, and I just could hear in her voice, this is something that they're not going to forget for a long time. And it's going to be yeah. a no. long time before they get and, out and of it. Houston's such a tough place. It's fairly flat. Right. There's not a lot of drainage. They've had situations, maybe not like this before, but flooding before. Mm -hmm. And being one of the largest cities in America, I think it's right. the fourth largest. How do you evacuate all those people? And you really oh. can't and without enough lead time and there wasn't enough lead time as a lot of issues there but a very sad situation unfolding down that way it really is and you know we're watching now off the georgia coast florida georgia coast for potential tropical system developing and we're going to start there tonight because this may impact especially our beaches on tuesday this would oh, really? become irma right now uh something new the hurricane center is doing they're issuing watches and warnings before a storm is actually named they think it's going to happen close to land and quickly enough so right now we've got what's called potential Tropical Cyclone 10, but the name on this would be Irma, and you see the circulation sort of spinning right there, low pressure, so it's starting to get organized. Some of the heavier rains down into Florida, but looks like it's going to be coming right up the coast. In fact, we've got tropical storm watches, the upper South Carolina coast and most of the North Carolina coast now in advance of what will become Irma. Winds now are at uh, 35 miles an hour, so a few more miles an hour to become a tropical storm, so it's not far from that. It's going to be near Charleston Monday afternoon. Monday night, Tuesday, look at this coming up the coast. So by two o'clock Tuesday, notice it's an L and not a tropical storm system symbol rather because the system is going to transition from a pure tropical system to a, an extra or post tropical system. So more of a, a just a deep area of low pressure, but boy, that close to the coast of Delmarva, the ocean beaches around here, big surf, big seas, stay out of the water Tuesday, maybe Wednesday before this thing starts to pull away as a formidable extra tropical storm around here. We may get some showers and some uh, windy weather from that. Tomorrow doesn't look too bad. A start to the week. A little bit more sun in the morning than the afternoon. Still not a lot of sun, but mid to upper 70s for highs with the average at 85. Another cool August day and we're 77 in town. High today was 79. We've got low to mid 70s Shenandoah Valley, low to mid 70s on the eastern shore and also in southern Maryland and a really nice Sunday evening. With dew points in the 50s, it feels good. Harvey, if you missed it at the top of the broadcast, still not moving much. We'll be around Texas, maybe going south and north for another three, four, five days. Yeah, more devastating rains there. Of course, we're going to watch the tropics off the Carolina coast. And around here, we had some passing clouds, but no big deal today. Future cast shows fairly quiet weather tonight and Monday with a few more clouds Monday afternoon. By Tuesday morning, we start to feel some of the influence of potentially Irma. And we'll see how much rain we get from that. Tuesday could be a yellow weather alert day, but if this thing's a little farther east, only some isolated showers. So we're monitoring Tuesday carefully. 50s and 60s tonight, clear to partly cloudy, comfortably cool. Another night for the open windows if the allergies aren't getting you. 60s and 70s in the morning, partly sunny, a bit breezy. Then in the afternoon, mostly cloudy, a stray shower. Highs holding in the 70s. Tuesday, showers more likely, 74, possible yellow weather alert day. Wednesday 80 with isolated showers and then on Thursday the warm day at 85 could see a late storm with the front that brings some nice weather Friday next weekend confidence is not high in that forecast because on Sunday I've got the Europeans saying hey we're going to see some of the remnants of Harvey as some showers but the mm -hmm. GFS is not going to be dry and sunny so right now my confidence on next Sunday is like this like this yeah. all right well you know what Washington's football team they're in action against the Bengals out at FedEx Field we got a report from Landover that's coming up in sports
Now, WUSA 9 Game On Sports with Frank Hanrahan, brought to you by Xfinity. Uh, they call it the dress rehearsal for the Redskins, and uh, maybe they need another preseason game because the first team offense in the first half, not too sharp, although they got a little bit better as it went on against the Cincinnati Bengals here at FedEx Field. Let me bring in Craig Hoffman, covers the Redskins for 106.7 The Fan. Uh, you know this week at practice, Craig, all the players told us we need to get off to a better start. That did not happen here against the Bengals. No, they didn't, but they made adjustments, which is a big thing, and that's a big part of their offense, the ability to see some different looks, then all of a sudden, okay, now we know what we're doing. We're going to shift that, shift some things around. They opened up the playbook a little bit, had a nice fake reverse screen pass to Chris Thompson, got the running game going. So there were encouraging signs in the first half, even though they didn't start as fast as they'd like. Let me uh, put the little negative Nelly on it with Kirk <laughs> Cousins uh, getting picked off, return for a touchdown, three, what, three straight, three and outs uh, for yeah. the offense. They did get it going, but fans and critics will say they're not ready for the regular season. No, the shocking part is the passing game looks awful. That's the part that's really surprising. One, Josh Stockson is nowhere to be found, and we'll have to wait till post game, unfortunately, to understand kind of what's going on with him. Terrell Pryor has now dropped four yeah. passes in this preseason. That's incredible for that, that short amount of time that they played. So we'll see what happens with the passing game. But that, that pick six by Kirk, really bad throw, really bad decision to try to chase down Vontaze yeah. Perfect. It's a preseason game, man. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah, what was he thinking trying to chase him down for that? I have no idea. All right, any positives? Defense forcing a turnover, yeah. and we got to see – Junior Gallette actually played here. Yeah, Gallette looks great. I mean, it looks like he has all camp. Looks fast, looks explosive. He's made a couple of plays, made the tackle to end the half, so that was really nice. Uh, oh, defense overall looks good outside of that first drive where A.J. Green was, you know, A.J. Green. And it's kind of like last week. You go, all right, if Aaron Rodgers and A.J. Green are going to beat us, that puts us in, in the boat with the rest of the league. So defense has looked really good so far. The running game. The running game offensively has looked good. Yeah, good to see Rob Kelly Absolutely. hit pay dirt. Do you think he's going to be the number one back come the Eagles on September 10th? Yeah, I think Samaj P. Ryan had a long way to go, and okay. Rob Kelly's just widened that gap today. P. Ryan's had a nice couple of carries, but Kelly's a starter. He's averaging, I think, five and a half yards a carry in this first half. He looks great. So uh, tell the Redskins fans how they should be calm and not panic about what happened here against the Bengals. It's very simple. This is the preseason. <laughs> the results don't matter. Craig Hoffman. 106.7 The Fan. Catch him daily as he's covering the Redskins uh, this season. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. All right, so the first team, uh, very mixed bag here. Slow start, but then they got it going against the Bengals. Uh, still one more preseason to go, but the Stardos will not play against Tampa Bay next week. And then it all starts September 10th against the Philadelphia Eagles right back here at FedEx Field. That is the latest here from Landover. For now, Frank Hanran, WSA 9 Sports. So it starts September 10th, but we're in the preseason. It doesn't matter. It, it, it matters for the guys who are trying to make the team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's it. And that's about it. Hey, so. talk to us a little bit about the rest of the evening tomorrow. Not a bad